true and I and I want you to know that also I will not make age an issue of this campaign I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponents youth and inexperience <laughs> Why is it inflationary to let the people keep more of their money and spend it the way they'd like, and it isn't inflationary to let him take that money and spend it the way he wants? He has then accused the people of living too well and uh, that we must share in scarcity, we must sacrifice and get used to doing with less. We don't have inflation because the people are living too well. We have inflation because the government is living too well. I can get something positive done on behalf of the people. That's what the question in this campaign is about. It's not only what's your philosophy and what's your position on issues, but can you get things done? And I believe I can. It took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of can terror. Can you say that a little louder, Candy? He, he did call it an act of terror. Jeb said when they come across the southern border, they come as an act of love. You said in September 30th that ISIS was not a I, I, Am I talking factor. or are you talking, Jeb? I'm you talking right back. now. I'm talking. You can go back. You're not talking. talking. You interrupted me, September 30th, Jeb. you going to apologize, Jeb? No. Am I allowed to finish? Yes. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. You are the single biggest liar. All right. This guy lied. Let me just tell you. This guy lied about Ben Carson when he took votes away from Ben Carson in Iowa. This guy will say anything. This little guy has lied so much go. about my record. Here we go. Let's not be naive about it. Why do, uh, why over her political career has Wall Street been a major, the major, a campaign contributor to Hillary Clinton? Uh, now, maybe they're dumb and they don't know what they're going to get, but I don't think so. I really don't think these kinds of attacks by insinuation are worthy of you. And enough is enough. If you've got something to say, say it directly. He hit my hands. Nobody has ever hit my hands. I've never heard of this one. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> and he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. Ah, yes, memorable moments indeed from debates gone by. What memorable moments will be created tonight? That is the question. And we have a moderator tonight named Lester Holt from NBC News. Uh, Lester Holt's been around a long time. A lot of criticism when Donald Trump said that he was a Democrat. Oh, he's a registered Republican. That doesn't matter. I worked with a talk show host who I shared a microphone with. That was my time in radio hell. And uh, this person was a registered Republican. So what? Was the biggest left-wing liberal Democrat wacko that I've ever been paired with, that I've ever seen. But I'm a, oh, but I'm a Republican. Yeah, right, you're a Republican. So registration doesn't mean anything. Now, you want proof of who Lester Holt is? This is compiled by uh, the Media Research Center. I got it from newsbusters.org. Credit where credit is due. Watch this. What frustrates you the most about perceptions about you? Uh, I've heard from quite a few uh, people my age that they think you're dishonest. And when he said that, I winced. And I was wondering, you've obviously been in tough battles, political battles, but do you get your feelings hurt sometimes? I, I just want to, like, say, Donald, how on earth did you let this man be the moderator? He winced. He winced. When, when Crooked Hillary was asked a legitimate question by someone at an event, he winced. So I guess he's not going to be asking any of those type questions of Hillary. Nothing questioning her honesty, even though the public questions it, like 65% think she's dishonest. But he, he can't do that because he'll wince. Do they hurt your feelings, Hillary? Do you ever get your little, little, little feelings hurt? He didn't care about hurting Donald Trump's feelings, though. Your negatives are staggering. Uh, disapproval, 69% uh, women, African Americans, 88%, Latinos, 79%, people under 34, 75% uh, disapprove. How much of that is self-inflicted by some of the rhetoric from the primary campaign? You said a lot of things. We've talked about this. Things that shocked people, that outraged people about a temporary ban on Muslim immigration to your characterizations of Mexican immigrants. As you try to appeal to the entire country, do you stand by them? Do you stand, for example, by the idea of a, of a ban against foreign Muslims? You've also promised to deport those in this country illegally. Do you stand by that? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see him wincing at his own questions, did you? 
I didn't see him asking Donald Trump, am I, am I hurting your feelings, Mr. Trump? Am I hurting your feelings? This is a joke. Just on these two things alone, it disqualifies him. He winced. Miss Madam Secretary, when that man questioned your honesty, I winced for you. Do you ever get your feelings hurt? What is that? From the man who's going to moderate the first debate? Wow. Okay. And then he went after Donald Trump Jr. When you think about a president, strength is obviously important, but we also sometimes, sometimes look for our leaders to be compassionate, to console us during mm -hmm. national tragedies. We saw President Obama in Dallas a, a, a week or so ago. We haven't seen that Donald Trump. Um, is this a man that can cry? Can he emote? Can he, can Very he much so. wrap his arms around the country at times of crisis? I think we can talk about that to an extent. I think you'll hear about that from Ivanka tonight. And I, I think we want to see it. Yeah, Donald Jr., I think we want to see it. Could you go have your despicable, Muslim-hating, immigrant-hating, xenophobic, racist, I hope I'm not hurting his feelings, Father, could you make him cry for us? What? What is that? And he wasn't finished. Have you ever seen him cry? I have. I have. I've seen him be very emotional. I've seen him be very compassionate. And again, not just to his family, because that's family, but to the, his employees that he's taken care of and that have worked for him and given him so many years of dedicated service. Do you see the blatant? I mean, great work by the Media Research Center. Fantastic. Compiling these things. I, I, you know, oh, from the great Republican, the Republican, Lester Holt. I, my gosh. Disqualification right on the spot. Why, why can the Media Research Center find it, and I could play it, and Donald Trump probably never saw it? Maybe he did. I don't know. But then again, Donald Trump hasn't played Jesse Jackson praising the heck out of him either. I played it for you. I mean, there's a lot of things that I presented to you guys that would behoove Donald Trump to put out there. Nothing. I, 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 and to allow Lester Holt, when someone questions Hillary's honesty, as 65% of Americans do, it, it makes him cringe or whatever he said. Really? That's the debate moderator? That's qualification? Wow. Okay, and there's more. Forget Trump, forget Hillary. There's more of his liberal views as exhibited on NBC Nightly News. Let's put up a graphic or two, shall we? All right, this is from um, June 25th, a year ago. That was Howard Cosell for those who the uninitiated out there. All right, across the country, over 10 million people have now signed up for health insurance under the Obamacare laws. The number of Americans without insurance creeps lower. It's a result a lot of people didn't expect after that rocky rollout. The Obamacare law now directly affecting so many families who say it's been quite literally a lifesaver. How about the millions more Americans, millions more, who say, I can't afford Obamacare premiums? Since its inception, it's gone up constantly. The deductibles are outrageous. I can't see my doctor. I had cancer. I have a cancer doctor. I can't see my oncologist. None of that. No, no. The big Republican didn't talk about any of that. Let's get to the next one, shall we, ladies and gentlemen? This is from, um, this is about Obama's old global warming pitch, September 1st of a year ago. Once again, Howard Cosell. Our team on an extraordinary journey to a place that is rapidly disappearing. Families bracing to flee what could be the first American refugees of climate change. It's an emergency at the top of the world right now, and Americans are right on the front lines. Up next, our journey to a spectacular place on Earth where American families are living in fear as a rapidly changing climate threatens to inundate them. And let's go to the next one. Big climate change person he is, that big Republican. Listen to this one. This is from December 17th of 2003. Uh, Lester Holt, is your SUV a weapon of terrorism? Some people think so. They're talking about, or they're taking out ads to tell you why. Coming up in our next half hour, is your SUV a weapon of mass destruction? Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you tonight's moderator who cringes when Hillary is asked a question about her honesty, who wants to know if Widow Hillary gets your feelings hurt and wants Donald Trump to cry so we could prove he's human and your SUV is an instrument of terror. Should be a heck of a fair debate. 
J.D. Hayworth kicks off our debate coverage. Don't go away.